assignment and this morning we're delving straight to the banking sector well yesterday uh wednesday august 14 marked exactly two years uh the bank of ghana revoked uh the licenses of erstwhile ut and capital banks now the move launched the central bank into an exercise that saw a drastic reduction in the number of commercial banks from 36 to 23. my colleague eton amse put together a documentary detailing events that characterized the two years cleanup uh, fallout as well as the state of the banking sector two years on let's let's take a look In 2017, the Bank of Ghana revoked the licenses of UT Bank Limited and Capital Bank Limited, a move which sent shockwaves across the country. The plans that were submitted by these banks were found to be unacceptable. A year later, the Central Bank of Ghana again in a press release announced the consolidation of five indigenous banks to form a new bank called the Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited. The bank is insolvent and unable to meet daily liquidity obligations falling due. What caused the banking sector crisis and why hasn't anyone been prosecuted yet? It all started on August 14, 2017. The Bank of Ghana in a press release announced its approval for the takeover of two indigenous banks, UT Bank Limited and Capital Bank Limited by GCB Bank Limited. Staff of the two banks in the interim became staff of GCB Bank with GCB Bank negotiating terms of their contract. UT Bank and Capital Bank were requested to submit restructuring and capital restoration plans. However, the plans that were submitted by these banks were found to be unacceptable. A pro forma balance sheet of liabilities to be taken and assets to be purchased were prepared and a pool of bidders was asked to express interest. GCB Bank was then selected among three others it has therefore become necessary for us to revoke their licenses. The central bank cited the insolvency of the banks as a major reason for the revocation of their operation licenses. According to the Bank of Ghana, upon several agreements with the banks to increase their capital requirements, managers of the banks failed to meet their requirement. In a bid to protect customers, the licenses of the banks were revoked and a purchase and assumption transaction with GCB Bank Limited. A year later, on August 1, 2018, the Central Bank of Ghana again in a press release announced the consolidation of five local banks to form a new bank called the Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited. The five collapsed banks included Unibank Ghana Limited, the Royal Bank Limited, Beige Bank Limited, Sovereign Bank Limited, and Construction Bank Limited. What essentially has happened is the Bank of Ghana has closed down the five banks. It's closed them down. It's closed them down, shut, kaput, out of the way. And then it has created a new bank, put money in that bank, and said, I will pull all the assets, the good assets into that bank, so that depositors don't lose their money. Insolvency was cited as a cause of the collapse of the various banks. During the reforms, the Bank of Baruda willingly folded up operations in the country and exited. You know, banking thrives on uh, confidentiality, integrity, and uh, safety and security of depositors' funds. So, what it means is that if a bank is liquidated, as it has happened, at the, at the end of the day, it affects the banking system because the kind of credibility and confidentiality that needs to be restored has been dented with. What the Bank of Ghana is saying, the governor is implying is this. When you came to me to set up your bank mm -hmm. and you said you had, say, 100 million, you never had 100 million. Absolutely. So how you, did you, you get the license? Okay, so you took 100 million 
from someone, showed it to me at the central bank, got the license, and because it wasn't your money, you had to repay. In January 2019, the Bank of Ghana announced the completion of its cleanup of the country's banking sector, which saw the number of commercial banks dropped from 33 to 23. So I asked, what caused the mess in the financial sector? The average Ghanaian puts his or her money in a bank without having to do due diligence. We know that this is a bank. It is licensed and regulated by Bank of Ghana. Therefore, if Bank of Ghana is doing their work properly, we don't need to worry about doing due diligence before we put our monies in a bank. It's been two years of rigorous shakeup in the banking sector. Two years of a massive reduction in the number of commercial banks from 36 to 23. It's been quite a journey for local banks having to raise 400 million cities as a new requirement to operate as a universal bank. Two years on, how clean is the banking sector? The Bank of Ghana's cleanup exercise was triggered by many challenges facing the sector which included high non-performing loans and insolvency due to poor corporate governance, false financial reporting and insider dealings. According to the central bank, the financial system had reached a tipping point and it could not have assumed business as usual. Imagine walking in the very first week I walked into this office. I had a debriefing from the International Monetary Fund uh, telling me that, well, you have inherited some good things and some not too good things. Among the not too good things were nine banks which were significantly undercapitalized and needed recapitalization. Among the nine banks were two banks that were insolvent and we think that the licenses of these two banks have to go. The two-year reform resulted in the collapse of nine banks, downgrading of one, merging of six banks and exiting of one. I would not say we are out of the woods yet. I mean, there's still risks to watch. There are still risks to watch. And, um, but I would say we are on a stronger footing now. And we are on a stronger footing because, one, the regulatory environment is tougher now to the minimum capital requirement is bigger now and so the risk absorptive capacity is more robust. Broadly, it gives uh, the Ghanaians opportunity to have confidence in the banking sector because you know today that if you walked into any bank that is licensed by the Bank of Ghana, you should expect that these banks will be in a position to honor your deposit request. These are banks that can provide you with loans, credits, uh, and then banks that are in a sense more efficient than what we found uh, two years ago. Welcome back to TV3 New Day. We're still on the assignment and we're talking about the banking sector two years after the cleanup that went on. And Etonam says, my colleague here at TV3, and she has done a documentary about the whole banking sector and the cleanup and two years on what we should expect. Also, we've been joined by banking consultant Nana Otoe Champong. Uh, thank you for joining me, lady and gentleman. Thank you, Aisha. Etonam, let me start with you. Uh, let's start with the interview with the Bank of Ghana. How did you get that in the first place? Well, Aisha, you know our job. Uh, we get to be the voice for the voiceless. Mm. We get to uh, get interviews or speak to people that the ordinary Ghanaian will not have access to. Right. And so that drive will tell you that you should work towards getting those interviews and get answers to questions uh, that people would want answers to. Mm. And so... And you know, if there's a will, there's a way. If you're willing to do something, you will find a way. I had been planning this interview over a year. Mm. You know, after one year, we didn't know what was happening to people whose name came up, you know, to have contributed to the collapse of, especially UT, UT and Capital Banks, right. and, and a few other issues. I had been asking myself, you know, we need to find answers. And usually mm -hmm. when we go for MPC, mm -hmm. 
you ask the governor questions and he, you don't get exactly the answer, answer you, you want. want. And mm. so we've been planning this for over a year, trying to get a one-on-one -on -one with him and ask the questions that people would you know, wants answers to. So that was how. So he started step by step planning it, speaking to a few people, you know, and all that. And and that was how we got the governor. So how was the experience? It uh, was a big one. I mean, this is, this is the out. first time uh, the governor, since he assumed office as governor of the Bank of Ghana, granting an interview to any so media this is house. Huge. So it's big, yeah. you know. So it was quite an experience for me mm. sitting one on one with the governor of the Bank of Ghana. One of the striking things I, I, I mean, in the midst of all these was the fact that people felt that the process was rushed. Mm. You know, reducing drastically the number of commercial banks from 36 to 23. 23. That is huge. Doing it in two years was what people felt. I mean, it was a good move, but mm. we could have done it step by step. Mm. Because mm. if you look at, for instance, CBG, banks that were crashed into cbg Put together. you have unibank you have construction you have ever uh, several other banks and these are banks that people had insurance with mm. okay mm -hmm. so it means that the receiver was taking over these banks with their insurance packages we had people who had visas that they couldn't use their visa cards they couldn't use online because a new person a new bank had taken over, over there them. were so many things we should have done that we did not do so people felt that you just got everyone messed up i mean people who wanted to do their transactions couldn't do it so mm. they felt that the bank of ghana yes it was a good move but they felt it was rushed in two years right so those were some of the striking things i felt I, i'll come uh, back know, to you I, I let me talk to nana and ask that um two years on after the cleanup the wrongs that we did that got some of the banks you know uh, removed uh, do you think we're writing them uh in a way yes the the wrongs <laughs> included uh, poor corporate governance, right. where issues were uh, decisions were taken that didn't follow the norm. Mm. Now a new corporate governance directive has been put in place, and all directors of banks are by force supposed to take uh, an annual certification program, mm -hmm. which they are going through. So that main wrong is uh, being righted. Once you get the corporate governance structure in place, then most of the things that went wrong, we wouldn't expect them to be going wrong as well. Right. So I think from that angle, we are working towards it. But how much responsibility should the Bank of Ghana be taking in all of this? In terms of responsibility, they've come out to say that they are the regulator. Mm. Uh, they did have regulatory forbearance in some instances. And so this time around, that forbearance is, is gone. And now they, they have, they've put their foot down. If they fell asleep on the job, now they are wide awake. And even uh, Sterling Etunam this morning, new directives came around about some of the wrongs, as you, you call them, mm. that were going on. There was something called facilitation fee, where if somebody is able to bring in a, a big uh, saver, you know, then they get something paid to them. Uh, this is an unsound practice because it's not the right type of incentive that a bank taking other people's money should be doing. So they have spelled out that under sections of the Act 931, 930, right, right. if you do that, uh, they will sanction you. So the, the wrongs are gradually being righted. Let's talk about the banks that were left. Of course, uh, mm. there was 36 before, and then there are now 23. Yeah. And then we have the Consolidated Bank. Um, how are those ones that were left to operate, how are they doing now um, currently? Generally, they're doing better. Uh, to start with, all the 23 uh, are now well capitalized from 60 million in some cases, mm. or 120 million in others, they now all have 400 million. So doing banking is a serious business, right. and capitalization is very important. So the 23 left, they've now all got the 400 million, mm. which means that uh, it is good for both borrowers and savers. So um, they'll be able to do big ticket jobs, um, transactions and that will help the economy uh, because 
in the, the last round of uh, capitalization was back in two, 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we didn't have oil. Right. Now, Ghana is an oil economy, which means we need uh, banks that will be able to sustain big ticket jobs mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to, to sustain the economy. So I think with their new capital, <coughs> it should be good for all. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, there were talks about prosecuting mm -hmm. the people that, because uh, th there was the issue of uh, fraud as well, mm -hmm. prosecuting those that are responsible for these banks, you know, coming down. Uh, two years on, do you see that happening? Well, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, during our interaction, spoke about the fact that um, some processes are in place, you know, as we speak, and that um, by the end of this year, we should see some of the names that came up uh, there that said that they contributed to the collapse of these banks. We'll see them prosecuted. But another thing I think we should pay attention to is uh, the five local banks, or mm. six, I mm -hmm. think, that were built out, was it five, five the, the, the ones that were built out by the Ghana Amalgamated Trust, five. Right. five. Right. Right. Now, these banks... Um, as at the time I spoke to the governor, I had information that they hadn't received the money. You know, government gave an assurance that we are setting up GAT to ensure that we raise this money for them. And so we assure that they are well governed. And so because of that, other banks were collapsed. Mm. Other banks like construction, other banks like heritage and all that, that the governor said that they were not well governed, were collapsed. And they, they, they were collapsed because they felt that they were not in line. They had to be put in line. Mm. Now, GAT banks still had not been recapitalized. Now, the Bank of Ghana tells us that they have received that money. But checks reveal that they still haven't, mm. you know, received that 400 million, which means that we were unfair to banks that could not meet that. Right. So I think that's something that we should look at moving forward. You speaking about this, Nana, uh, uh, brought me here. Um, we were built to talk to one of the um, workers of one of the banks that collapsed, who um, two years on hadn't you know, received some monies that they were supposed to receive. Uh, what should be the way forward for such people? Yes, before I come to that, mm. I don't want to correct what my uh, niece is. <laughs> 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 Now, um, the, the GAT then, um, you know, the five institutions that uh, were built to take money from them, mm. each of them um, has uh, shareholders, and therefore you don't just go in and do this thing. So they are going through the processes, and I think uh, my checks also reveal that they are not far from giving the monies out. So... Uh, it's, it's not that bad. But we, they are not far. We had for like a, like a year ago. <laughs> so we just want to no, be only, aware. only in January. Are, it's not yeah, a year. Well, well, it's only, we only just, seven months. But we are, we are getting close to the end of the year. Now. So we want to we want to bring finality to that. And so it will, it will, that it will, it's not far far off right. at all. So, yes. so generally, yes. Nana, what's the way forward? Yes. Mm. The way forward for the staff, mm. yes. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, to say the least, because for depositors, which are the savers of these banks that um, were resolved, every single soul has received every single penny that they are entitled to. Uh, there may be some still in escrow and they haven't got access to. But everybody, nobody has lost a penny. Now, the, well, I would have expected that the staff too would be in a similar situation. But it becomes a question of money. And I'm sure uh, the promise that the government has given will be carried out, that the staff will be rightly recompensed. I mean, it will be impossible to put them in the same position mm. they were before mm. they collapsed. But uh, whatever has been agreed, I'm sure they, 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 they will be made good on that promise. Mm. Yes. And so now let's wrap up with you. Um, what's mm. next after this? What should we expect? Well, um, uh, the business Dex is ready to take on bigger... Uh, interviews mm. and you know bring viewers what really and bring answers to viewer questions that i'm sure 
uh, will be on the minds of viewers, whether it's on the banking sector, it's on the mining sector, or whatever it is. And so they should just keep their down here on TV3. Uh, we'll bring them more more groundbreaking interviews. Thank you very much, <laughs> Etonamse. Etonamse, it's a news anchor and producer here <laughs> at Media General. And Nana Otue Champong is a banking consultant. And we've been talking about the banking sector cleanup two years on.